I noticed from some of the uh, things, of course, I've uh, looked at some of the blogs that uh, you've been on, some of the responses and so forth. And, of course, one of the, uh, the things that uh, seems, even to me in some ways, counterintuitive is this idea of protecting uh, value. You know, if I spend uh, 10 years writing a software program and uh, uh, am selling it and everybody has the right to copy it and send it to their friends or send it overseas or whatever else, in some way, it makes me feel like right. uh, I've uh, I've screwed up. I've, right. uh, <laughs> and and not only that I've screwed up, but that if I knew that was going to happen, maybe I would have never right. uh, invested my effort in that to begin with. And I know that's not necessarily an intellectual argument against it, but it is a consequence that most people uh, think of with people spending yeah. millions of dollars to uh, make. Uh, uh, First run movies or yes. or or write books or anything yes. that they somehow or other their value is being stolen. Well, there, there's a there's a, a interesting little uh, logo I have on my website. It's a, it's a little Aeroflot symbol and it says your failed business model is not my problem. <laughs> you know, but what that what that gets at is that in any society, an entrepreneur has to be aware of the possibility of free riders, um, and they have to try to come up with a creative way to make a profit despite the fact of some things are being easily copied and some things are not. So as a simple example, in the, in the 50s when the drive-in movie theaters were initially popular, uh, one problem according to, according to Apocrypha is that um, you could have free riders sit on the neighboring hills and watch the movie for free because it was outdoors and they could listen to it because there were loudspeakers behind the screens. <laughs> and so these guys had the bright idea well, let's pay a little money and install little speakers on little speakers, poles yeah. by every car. Now, that's probably not as good of a solution, and it's probably cost money, but they found a way. They didn't go to the government to say, make it a, a, a federal crime to sit on a hill and watch a movie. They just came up with a way to. And in fact, every business has locks on the doors, and at the movie theaters, they have uh, tellers that take the tickets to make sure you only come in if you buy a ticket. These things cost money. So every business model, the entrepreneur has to find a way to make a profit. If you can't find a way to make a profit, probably that's not something you should be involved in. But I believe the reality is that almost every practice we're used to in today's society could exist in a, in a free society absent copyright and patent, primarily because um, um, taxes would be so much lower, we would all be so much more wealthy, we'd have so much, so little, few regulations if the government were stripped down to such a small size that he couldn't impose patent and copyright, that we'd have it, just an excess of money for research and development and for investing in movies. Um, there's no reason to believe, for example, that uh, a blockbuster movie couldn't be made. Maybe Tom Cruise would be paid five million instead of 20 million. Uh, but you sell tickets, people go to the movie theater, and they watch it. And then if it's pirated after that, you've, you've made a lot of money. Um, for example, let, let's take Harry Potter. J.K. Rowling, a very popular author, she's probably worth second or first richest woman in England now. Maybe she wouldn't be worth half a billion dollars in a free society. Maybe she's worth 10 million, I don't know. But I think she'd have an incentive to write Harry Potter because she wrote it as an unemployed welfare mom right because she loved right. the characters so let's imagine she writes the first harry potter book and she sells it on amazon and it's pirated soon after that because it's popular she makes a little money but not as much as she could have if she had a monopoly but she becomes wildly popular as she did in real life well then she publishes a second novel and she sells more but she's still pirated well then she says listen i've got 17 million fans around the world uh i've got the third novel written as soon as you guys as soon as I get a million people pledge $10 each to buy the book, I'll release it. Uh -huh. So she makes $10 million that way. And then someone wants to make a movie of it. There might be four people making a movie of the first Harry Potter novel at the same time because they don't need her permission if there's no copyright. But maybe one of these studios says, you know, I bet if we get Harry Potter on board and to give her authorization and to consult that we will get more of the fans to come see our version rather than the, the other unauthorized versions. So they offer to pay her $5 million to be a consultant. I mean, these things don't occur to people now because they can rest upon the copyright and the patent monopoly. But in a free society, there's no end to the creativity that entrepreneurs could and would resort to to make a profit off of their ingenuity and creativity.